Hello and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Thank you guys for liking and subscribing and for the super thanks. I would love to see some more love through some more likes and subscribes. Today we are talking about lost communication and instrument flying. So 91-185 is really lengthy and it is also quite confusing. So I am going to break it down. We're going to talk about it with flow charts, hopefully give you some tools of how you can explain this because this is a line item, a area that's going to be covered on instrument pilot test stuff. Because if you look at the airman certification standards, it says you have to explain what happens when you lose your radio under instrument flying. So let's break this down with a flow chart. First question you ask yourself is look outside the window. Can I see? If I'm flying in visual meteorological conditions and my radio has failed, it is very simple. I go land somewhere and call ATC. This could be a towered airport. If it is, look for light gun signals. I have them printed on my kneeboard for a reason so I could refer to it if I need it. But if you get into VMC after your radio has failed, land as soon as practicable under VFR, call ATC. Easy. Okay. That's probably not the scenario your uh, check ride is going to give you. So let's keep going with this. Let's say you don't encounter visual meteorological conditions. Radio has failed. What am I going to do? I am going to continue to my clearance limit. How am I going to get to my clearance limit? First, let's look at the route. First thing we're going to be looking at is whatever is assigned by ATC. Or if you are being vectored by ATC, then you go direct to wherever it was they were vectoring you. Then you go to whatever you were told to expect. If you have that in your clearance, if they said expect such and such and such, then you would do that. Or lastly, last priority is whatever you filed in your flight plan. So this is a nice little acronym, Avenue F A V E F. Might help you remember. If it doesn't, then you know, find something else. But a Avenue F can help you remember that. So it's with assigned by ATC or vectored, then go direct. What you're expecting from ATC told you expect such and such, whatever, or whatever's filed in your flight plan. So that's what the route that we would do. Again, this is if we are still in instrument meteorological conditions with a communications failure. Secondly, we're going to look at what altitude we have to fly. So what we have is another little acronym, MEA, which if you watch some of my other videos or you're studying instrument stuff, MEA should sound familiar, right? Minimum and root altitude. Well, here we're going to use it for a different acronym. And that's to help remember what altitude we fly with lost communications. First of all, we're going to fly the highest of these things. The minimum altitude for IFR operations, okay, or whatever ATC told us to expect. Lastly, whatever was assigned by ATC. But on this one, it's not like in some sort of priority order. It's the highest of those three altitudes. So we pick the highest because that's the most safe thing to do. And this is 91185, really broken down by a flow chart. Now, I want to also bring up, this is an area that you could be asked about for dispatch knowledge test things too, because uh, part 121 airline operations, we're still required to know instrument foundational rules and 91185 is a universal rule. Now, is it likely that we would lose communications in a part 121 airline environment? Unlikely, but this is still the rules that would be followed if that happened. And so you may be asked that on dispatcher oral and practical exams. All right, so this is the little mini bite. Now let's move on to what happens if you get to your clearance limit. So first, once you get to your clearance limit, you have to ask yourself, have I received and expect further clearance time. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, you don't lose your radio while you're doing a holding pattern, so you don't really have an expect further clearance time. But if you have gotten one, you would continue in a holding pattern 
till you get to expect further clearance time. Okay, that's pretty simple, but again, doesn't happen that often that way. All right, so no, let's say you do not have an expect further clearance time. Don't have an expect further clearance time. So now we have to ask ourselves, all right, what is my clearance limit? My clearance limit, what is it? Is it a fix where an approach begins? Okay, if it's an approach fix, it's an initial approach fix on the chart, then we can continue and proceed to fly our approach as close as possible to our estimated time of arrival with whatever we filed on our instrument flight plan. Okay, so that would be if we somehow have lost communications, but I've been told to proceed to a fix. ATC, the last thing they were doing was vectoring me to a fix for where an approach starts. Then I can continue going to that point and then try to time it so I leave that point at close as possible to my estimated time of arrival. Okay, but let's say more likely we lost communications and we, it was not a fix for where an approach begins. So let's say no, the clearance limit was not somewhere where the approach started from, all right? So if not, then we're gonna go to a fix where an approach starts. So I'm gonna pick my own initial approach fix, find one that's available, what works good for me. Hopefully I got a weather briefing, I should have, if I'm a legal and safe pilot, I got a weather briefing beforehand, so I should have some clue what the wind is going to do. So I should choose an initial approach fix that would make sense for an approach that would align me with the runway because I would really like to be able to land from this approach and not have to execute a missed approach. So I go to a fix where an approach begins. And once again, I am going to do my descent and my approach as close as possible to my estimated time of arrival in my instrument flight plan. Hopefully you enjoyed this little unpacking with a few flow charts of instrument flying for if we lose communications. But make sure you stick around because I'm gonna have a part two video where we are going to actually break all this down with an actual application, with an actual scenario, with a few charts and break it down. And like I said, tell a story. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you like these videos, if these are helping you prepare for your tests. I would absolutely love a super thanks if you do that, I will give you a shout out on a future video, two thumbs up for super thanks and helpers who love to promote this channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. Have a great day.